comparing rates of change. What is a rate of change? Well, when we're talking about rate of change, we're talking about slope, or we're talking about rise over rut, and we're talking about the tilt of a line. We're comparing the vertical change on the Y compared to the horizontal change on the X. And we can be asked to find rate of change from many formats. We can be given a table, an equation, a graph, or a list of points, and we can find the rate of change or the slope and compare them from these different formats. So let's look at some of these formats that we're talking about. So let's say we're given slope from a table or we're asked to find slope or rate of change from a list of points. So we have the points 8, 4, 6, 3, and 4, 2 in table form. And we also have it just given as a list as 8, 4, 6, 3, and 4, 2. And this confuses a lot of people because when we think of slope, we only think of using two points and putting them in the slope formula. And in this case, we're given three points and asked to find slope. Well, any two points on a line will give you the same slope. So the point that they gave us three points, we just pick any two of these points and put them in the slope formula and find the slope. So we can pick any two we want. I just normally pick the first two I come to. And you might want to stay away from negatives. If those negative signs mess you up, you could pick the ones without negative points. But in this case, they all have positive numbers anyway. I would just pick 8, 4, and 6, 3. And then we can put those into the slope formula. Identify my first point and my second point as my x1, y1 for the first point, x2, y2 for my second point. And then we're going to put those into the slope formula. m equals y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. So on the top, we would have 3, mi 3 minus 4, y2 minus y1. On the bottom, 6 minus 8. 3 minus 4 is negative 1, and 6 minus 8 is negative 2. So I have a negative 1 over negative 2, and a negative divided by negative is a positive. So my slope or my rate of change is 1 half. What other formats might we be given? Well, let's say we're given find the slope from a graph. Well, I can take any two points from this line, put them in the slope formula, and find the slope or the rate of change. or since they've given me a graph, I would just draw a right triangle somewhere where I can tell exactly where points are crossing. Like I can tell right here at 0, 0, it looks like the blue line crosses exactly. I wouldn't want to pick somewhere that had fractions, but I want to pick somewhere I can tell the line is crossing with the lines behind it. So this is a great place to draw a right triangle because I could tell that crosses definitely with two, point, two lines behind it. This point crosses with two points behind it. So if I draw a right triangle, then I can just find or I can count the spaces for the rise and the run. How many spaces of rise will be like the change on the Y, the spaces on the X will be the run. So one, two, three spaces for rise, and then on run, one, two, three, four, five spaces for run. So I have rise over run, so I have three over five. I do want to double check my line from left to right to see does it have a positive slope or does it have a negative slope? Well, from left to right, this line is going up, so my slope is positive from left to right, so my slope is 3 fifths, or my rate of change is 3 over 5. 3 in rise, 5 in run, rise over run. So if you have a graph, don't necessarily need to use the slope formula, just um, draw in that triangle draw a right triangle, and count the rise and run. The other format we sometimes see would be slope-intercept form, or if we're given an equation, um, and if it's in y equals mx plus b, the great thing about y equals mx plus b is without any math, I can tell the slope is the number in front of the x, and the b at the end is the y-intercept. So, for example, if I have y equals 6x plus 4, Slope intercept form, I could just look at the number in front of the x and the slope is 6. And the y intercept would be 4. But let's say they gave us an equation that's not in slope intercept form, then I can put it into slope intercept form. So if your equation is not in slope intercept form, you can arrange the equation to solve for y. So we have negative 6x minus 3y equals 9. 
To put this into slope intercept form, I could add 6x to each side. Then I could divide all three parts by negative 3. Divide this term by negative 3. Divide this entire side by negative 3. So negative 3 divided by negative 3 is just 1y or y. 6x divided by negative 3 is negative 2. And 9 divided by negative 3 is negative 3. So once I'm in slope-intercept form, I'm in y equals negative 2x minus 3. The slope, or the rate of change, is just the number in front of the x. So our rate of change, or our slope, is negative 2. So how do we compare rates of change? Well, we've got to find the rate of change from whatever format we're looking at, and then we can make some comparisons. And when comparing rates of change or slope, we're really talking about the absolute value of a slope. And decimals can really be helpful when we look at these two. So if we look at the blue line, and we had already found the slope on this line. We found the slope. We drew the triangle. We found the slope was 3 fifths, had a rise of 3, a run of 5. And if we think of that as a decimal, it would be 6 tenths. So having a decimal form sometimes can make it a lot easier to compare. Unless you have whole numbers, then... You don't even have to worry about a decimal, but if you have a fraction, changing it to a decimal might make it easier to compare. Then the pink line, we have a slope of two-thirds. Well, two-thirds of a decimal is at 0 0.6 repeating, and I rounded the last digit there to a 7. If you think about this like money, though, this would be the blue line would be like 60 cents, the pink line would be like 66 or 67 cents. So right away, when we're in decimal form, a whole lot easier to tell. I look at these lines, they almost look parallel. That pink line is just a little bit steeper, and that little bit steeper shows up easiest in the decimal. Just looking at 3 and 5 with two different denominators, kind of hard to tell which is uh, larger. But once it's in decimal form, thinking about it like money, the pink one is just slightly steeper than the blue one. So which line has the greater slope? Well, the pink line does. The absolute value of two-thirds greater than the absolute value of three-fifths. And that's just a way of measuring your steepness. And with the absolute value, we could still have a negative slope. Um, but if we're looking at absolute value, it could be a steeper line. So absolute value in decimal is helpful with our comparisons for uh, rates of change or slope. I hope that helps you guys completing your work and understanding Comparing rates of change. Have a great day. OUT spells out.